In the next few videos, we're going to talk about gases. This video is going to start by going over the kinetic molecular theory of gases, as well as pressure. The first thing we want to discuss is what exactly is the kinetic molecular theory of gases? It's a model that's used to describe the interactions between ideal gas particles. Now, the first thing you need to know is that ideal gases do not exist. However, under certain conditions, ideal gases actually describe the interactions of real gas particles pretty well. And that's specifically under conditions of high temperature and low pressure. So this is where you have to be a bit careful on the exam. You probably recall with ideal gases learning all of these different laws, the ideal gas law, Boyle's law, and so forth. What you need to recognize is if on the MCAT you're ever under a situation of low temperature, high pressure, or both, you cannot apply any of those equations because in those cases, the ideal gas is not a good model of real gases. All right, so now let's take a look at what are the assumptions that we make with describing the interactions between ideal gas particles. You should know these different assumptions for the MCAT. The first is that the volume occupied by the gas particles is negligible compared to the volume of the container. This is essentially saying that in a container with gases, you do have gas molecules, but it's mostly open space. The distance between the gas molecules is very large. Our second assumption is the gas molecules do not experience any intermolecular forces. If you recall, in a previous video, we discussed the different IMFs, London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. The assumption here is that ideal gas particles do not experience any of those attractive intermolecular forces. Our third assumption, the average kinetic energy of the molecules is directly proportional to temperature. So essentially, if you double the temperature, you double the kinetic energy of your molecules. Our fourth assumption is gas molecules are in constant random motion. And our fifth assumption is collisions between gas particles are perfectly elastic. Now, the reason why I'm not describing these two assumptions to as much detail is because for the MCAT, the first three assumptions are the most important. You should be aware of these assumptions, but they're definitely lower yield topics for the MCAT. You might also recall this term perfectly elastic from your physics classes, so you might think, oh, this is something that is important. But the good news is that the MCAT doesn't test collisions as a physics topic, so you don't have to worry about learning the difference between elastic versus inelastic collisions. Okay, so now that we know what the kinetic molecular theory of gases is, let's move on to discuss pressure, which is noted by capital P. Pressure is formally defined as force over area. At this point, we haven't really discussed any forces. You might be wondering, where is this pressure coming from? Well, remember, when we're looking at gas particles, they are moving randomly in the container. So inevitably, at some point, they're going to collide against the walls of the container. And when they collide against the walls of the container, that gas particle exerts a force over the area of the wall that it collided with. So essentially, when we're talking about the pressure of a gas, we're looking at the number and strength of the collisions against the walls of the container. So as a simple relationship, you should know that the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to the temperature. The reason why is because, as we said earlier, temperature is directly proportional to kinetic energy. So if you increase the temperature, your gas molecules have more kinetic energy. This means that they are moving faster, so there will be more collisions and stronger collisions against the walls of the container. All right. Another important topic for pressure is units. Of course, there are situations where you do have to do calculations with gases, particularly with all of the different gas laws that we're going to discuss. So the first unit that you're likely familiar with is atmosphere. 
And what's convenient about the atmosphere is that here at sea level, the pressure is one atmosphere. And there are other units that you're going to see in the MCAT, so you do need to know how to interconvert between these units. The next one I want to look at is millimeters of mercury. And where this unit came from is essentially the simple mercury barometer, which you do have, do have to have a general understanding of how it works. So if you take a look at this diagram, we have a simple mercury barometer. You have a container filled with mercury and you place a tube that has been evacuated. So there are no gas particles in that tube and you put it inside the mercury solution upside down. Now, what happens is there is pressure above the mercury and that environmental pressure is going to push down on the mercury. And when it pushes down on the mercury, it's also gonna push the mercury up the tube. So essentially, the greater the pressure, the higher the mercury moves up the tube. And as it turns out, at sea level, one atmosphere of pressure will push the mercury up a distance of 760 millimeters. So that's where this unit conversion comes from. Another unit that you need to know is the TOR, which is essentially named after a scientist who did a lot of this research on the pressure of gases. So you can see here that one atmosphere is also equal to 760 TORs, essentially telling you that millimeters of mercury in the TOR are equivalent units. The last unit you need to know is Pascals. So one atmosphere is approximately equal to 100,000 Pascals. The Pascal is a derived SI unit, so a Pascal is equivalent to a Newton per meter square. Okay, so that's what you need to know about pressure as well as the kinetic molecular theory of gases for LAMCAT.